Netherlands to take a nice 15-day cruise. This is a captain from the bridge. A Hong Kong resident tested positive for coronavirus. We were sure that it was not a problem. This thing was spreading through the boat. The ship will remain under quarantine for 14 days. 14 days. In a room that's four by three. Check with our medical staff if you have experienced fever, chills, cold. The Diamond Princess was ground zero. The U.S. officials debate whether to bring the Americans back. You need to get us off the ship or we all get sick and die. It's very intense. And they said, OK, just people who don't have COVID. How are you feeling? But they didn't know who had the COVID. That was the medical examination. Our team went on board. They started to load all Americans for transport to the airport. On the way to the airplane, test results would come back positive. Pandemonium ensues. The president is just furious. Our numbers are going to go up. They didn't know how to handle a single cruise ship. They can't get that right. How are they going to get the rest of this right? Carnival knew that there was a pandemic. To our harbor, we realized there were many more cruise ships out there. Why did the cruise ships keep sailing? Well, Jeff, you win with the background. <laughs> well, thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me this morning. Talking about your documentary, Hell of a Cruise. What a hell of a movie. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, Nick, we tell us. We spent a while on that title. We were like with <laughs> seasick or cabin fever or <laughs> we no, went it... through all the maritime themed uh, like puns <laughs> that you could possibly think of. And did you make the final decision? He said, you're the director, so did you make the call and calling out a hell of a title? I, I don't make the final decision on the title, but I did propose the title. <laughs> so I kind of, I'm implicitly supporting it by proposing it. But when you propose 50 of them, I'm supporting all of them. Which one's my favorite child? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, Nick, it's a hell of a cruise. And what a documentary. Uh, you know, tell our viewers, how did a two-week cruise turn into a COVID-19 nightmare? Well, there was just, there was one original passenger, a passenger zero. They got off the boat in Hong Kong, and then the, the ship kept on sailing uh, with no behavior modification. And then seven or eight days later, they were quarantined in um, Yokohama for 14 days. And then subsequent to that, they were repatriated by a, a disaster medical assistance team um, that, you know, these guys are, if you want to talk about real heroes, the disaster medical assistance team are the type of guys that parachute into infectious disease outbreaks. They were sent to um, the Diamond Princess to repatriate the passengers. And then they had to do another quarantine for 14 days once they got to America. That's incredible. Uh, was it difficult to get passengers personal footage? And you must have had a treasure trove of footage to choose from. Well, it, it was, it was, there was a certain amount of, of, of effort that went into getting the passengers footage. Spencer came to us with the footage, with my partner's Matt. With, um, so we had that as a base. And then Spencer was very helpful because while in the quarantine, the passengers had developed a network to communicate amongst themselves, whether it was uh, through a variety of different text apps or social media. So there was an existing network for us to, to, to work through and, and get their footage. And the Diamond Princess was literally ground zero, wasn't it? It was the first super spreader. It was the first super spreader event outside of China. And it's certainly the first one that American doctors got to uh, triage the patients and to, and the Japanese authorities had an accurate uh, uh, report on the, um, how many people they tested, how many people were affected, the severity of their symptoms. So as the doctors say in the film, we knew everything we needed to know about COVID-19 after the Diamond Princess. Yet, we still managed to um, have two hyper-divergent um, um, uh, reactions to the pandemic and to COVID-19. And if, if there's one thing this film, if there's two things this film does was, if we can have, and when we're faced with a pandemic, maybe this could be a moment to come together as a country rather than divide ourselves. And I also think that potentially, the legislation that affects passengers, uh, that affects cruise ships should be looked at. There should be a bill of rights for passengers and the crew. Yeah, it reflects I... the type of, you know, 
Princess is an American, Princess appears as an American corporation and should employ people in that way. So when you get on a boat, you're not getting on an American boat, you're getting on a boat from Bermuda or San Salvador or Liberia or, or another small country called England. Yeah, because also most cruise ships still went out to sea even after they discovered COVID on the Diamond Princess. Is that right? Yeah, lots of boats kept on going. And even they went on going even when they knew there was COVID on those boats. Well, I'm telling you, Nick, I just watched this documentary. I kept thinking to myself, what would happen if all those passengers just stormed off the ship? I mean, was there, would there be consequences to that? Oh, yeah. So um, the... The, the quarantine laws are, are, are very strict uh, and you know it's the you, there's an that would be very bad like I would not advise you doing that the quarantine laws are very strict and for a reason well I would just say it's it, it, I was surprised there wasn't a mutiny you know that just no but you, you've got to, no, so maybe in the future we're going to see you know there's a lot of people refugees move for war for water for Famine, you know, we could start to see refugees coming because of infectious diseases in the future. And we need to think about what the repercussions of that really are. And while watching this documentary, Nick, you also made this documentary at the peak of COVID. So you had enormous challenges to produce this film as well. Yeah, it was it was pretty tricky. We were like, you know, and we made we did interviews in Australia, Japan, uh, Poland, uh, all over the place, and we're, we're you know we're, we're coordinating with Zoom and trying to zoom into the interview and use local cameramen. It was quite a um, a performance to get all those different interviews in there and try to get some consistency between the interviews. Well, it was an incredible documentary. Thank you so much for joining me today, Nick. Uh, Hell of a cruise is on Peacock right now, so thank you so much, and let's talk again soon. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.